Well, this is Dave Gaddis, and today we're interviewing Dan Sefko here in his uh, Freeze Nichols office in Austin, and this is the 9th of December, 2014. So welcome, Dan. And why don't we start at the beginning, and let's tell me what, when and where you were born. Well, I was born in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, but uh, didn't live there very long. Uh, my folks moved from St. Louis to Dallas when I was one year old. Uh, my first residence was in the Melrose Hotel in, uh, in Dallas, and I lived there two weeks and then moved to East Dallas, and uh, that was my first residence. So what did your parents do to the my dad was a salesman, and he worked for DuPont. And he moved from uh, he worked from uh, he moved from uh, St. Louis. He was transferred to. Make sure that you're catching him as he swings back and forth. But that's okay. I anticipated. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you stayed in Dallas for through high school. Yes. And uh, what high school did you graduate? From? I graduated from Brian Adams High School in East Dallas. Went off to college and went off to college to the University of Texas at Arlington and um, received a undergraduate degree in architecture okay. and uh, a master's in city and regional planning. Okay. And did you work between the two degrees or did you go straight from the bachelor's to the master's? Uh, I worked all along. I worked full time uh, mostly through undergraduate school and through graduate school. Where did you work I started with Marvin Springer and Associates in 1971 when I graduated from high school. Uh, I was working at Kroger and I wanted to be an architect. So I started working uh, uh, part time in 1971. Doing what kinds of things? Well, I went to work for Marvin Springer, and I was going to be an architect. And at that time, there was no architecture-related jobs in Dallas. Architecture was having a hard time in the early 70s. And so my mother knew Marvin Springer's secretary. And she said, uh, I don't know exactly what they do, but they need a draftsman. And back then, drafting was a skill. Uh, then and, the, and draftsmen were in need and Marvin Springer needed a draft person and so I went in and signed up and he hired me. And this is free computers? Right? Way computers. I remember the salary. I was, he, he signed me up at $1.80 an hour. <laughs> That's big money, particularly for someone right out of high school. Yeah. So you ended up getting the degree in architecture? Did you still aspire to be an architect? Well, uh, I did. I did get a degree in architecture. And uh, as I went through the architecture program at UTA, I uh, learned that planning was really where I wanted to be. I found out that architects, very few of them, uh, designed the buildings and design and architecture was where my love was, rather than structurals and the engineering part of it. So I decided that uh, planning was where I wanted to go, and that was all because of my uh, mentorship with Marvin Springer. And as I recall at that time, the planning program was in the architecture school at UT? Yes, sir. The, uh, the planning program was uh, nested within the School of Architecture at UTA. It was also a 60-hour program. Remember some of the faculty members? Uh, Gene Brooks, Joel Goldstein uh, were some of the founding faculty there, and uh, Dean Cole uh, were some of the, and artists here. Uh, on Jemani. On Jemani. Okay. And you remember some of your classmates? Yes, uh, it was a very distinguished class. Uh, a lot of those planners are in uh, well-established positions today. Uh, Martin Glenn is the assistant city manager in, in Garland. Uh, John Hester was a classmate, and he is the director of planning for the Tahoe Regional Planning Commission. Uh, Rick Osborne, city manager in Leveland, uh, among many others. So you graduated with your master's, and so did you stay with Marvin Springer? Uh, actually, about the time uh, I was in the master's program, uh, Marvin Springer retired, uh, approximately 1979 or, or about then. And I left Marvin Springer and went to work as a planner for the city of Plano. Okay. So before we go to that, let, let's talk a little bit about, about Marvin Springer and his career. You, you want to? briefly talk about what he did in the North Texas area? Yes, uh, 
let me see if I can condense this a little bit, but uh, Marvin uh, went to school at Iowa State. There's actually a, a scholarship program in his name at Iowa State for planning uh, today that he set up. But uh, he uh, was an Iowa boy. Uh, he went to work for Harlan Bartholomew, which was uh, a very respected planner uh, in uh, the early years of planning practice and he worked for uh, Harland and that's how he got his start. And as he was working for Harland Bartholomew, uh, World War II broke out. So he left Harland Bartholomew and went to war. He actually served under George Patton in World War II in the artillery. And so after World War II, he went back to work for Harland Bartholomew uh, for a while and Harland graciously accepting the back after the war and then uh, uh, somewhere along the way uh, Marvin Springer signed up to be the planning director for the city of Dallas approximately 1950. So from 1950 to 1960 he was planning director for the city of Dallas and then uh, roughly uh, in the early 60s he left and opened up his uh, consulting practice uh, in Dallas and was Marvin Springer and Associates. Uh, he stayed in that position until he retired in 1979. At that time there were very few planning consultants in the state of Texas and so he forged that practice and became uh, one of the uh, most well-respected planning consultants in the state. Did comprehensive plans and zoning ordinances for many of the cities in yes, North he, Central Texas? Uh, Mr. Springer did comprehensive planning, um, zoning ordinances, subdivision ordinances, capital improvement planning for many uh, small and medium-sized cities throughout the state of Texas. Okay. So in 79 you went off to the city of Plano. What, what did you do there? I was uh, a staff planner to begin with and then uh, I uh, became in charge of updating their 1980 comprehensive plan which I did in-house and stayed there through 1982. Okay. And then where'd you go from there? Uh, from 1982 I went to work for J.T. Duncan and Associates. Uh, uh, he worked for Marvin Springer as well and he had opened up his own firm as Marvin was uh, beginning to retire. So I went to work for him uh, as an associate and later became a junior partner okay. in that firm. You want to talk a little bit about JT? JT uh, Duncan was uh, also a, rep, uh, a very uh, uh, renowned planner in Texas uh, in the early years. He graduated from A&M before they had the planning program there, but he worked in Corpus Christi as a planning director and uh, Garland and, uh, and a num number of other places before he went to work for Marvin Springer. So he and Marvin Springer actually hired me at, at, when I came out of high school. They were on the interview team. And uh, J.T. Duncan uh, practiced for a long time uh, from uh, 19, the mid-1970s until he retired uh, about 1997-96 at which time at which time I took over the practice I uh, bought out the remaining shares from JT and became president of uh, a firm named Duncan Sefco and Associates Incorporated okay. and you recall some of the staff members that you worked with uh, over the time with JT and with your own firm Yes, uh, D Don Scholl is uh, was a uh, uh, an artist, and he's now uh, and and was last I checked a very re uh, renowned sculptor at University of North Texas. Uh, Bill Shevlin was uh, in the process of working there, and he became a developer um, among a, f a few, and then of course J T Duncan, and, uh, and then also. Uh, uh, while uh, I was at uh, uh, J.T. Duncan, we had a lot of uh, uh, coming up and, and, and aspiring landscape architects that are now out and practicing on their own. Okay. Any particular pro projects that uh, you're particularly proud of? 
Well, one I'm proud of is, uh, is uh, we did the first zoning ordinance for the city of Bryan. Um, uh, that was when Terry Morgan and I worked on the first project together ever. And so that was about 1987. And uh, Bryan did not have zoning. College Station had zoning, but uh, there was no zoning in Bryan. And he and I went down there and the two of us, we got zoning adopted for the city of Bryan. So that was one. And then the firm transitioned to Duncan Sefco and Associates? Yes, when I purchased uh, the uh, remaining shares, uh, we changed the name to Duncan Sefco and Associates. Some projects during that era that you're particularly proud of? The, the, there, there are a number, but uh, we uh, did a lot of the planning work for the city of Frisco. Uh, we've done most of the planning in Frisco over the years. Um, others have contributed. But we're very uh, pleased about the planning projects we did for the city of Frisco, uh, the city of Waxahachie, and the city of Cedar Hill. All those three communities have a legacy of our involvement and today are thriving uh, very well because I would like to think of some of the planning that they did in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Did your firm specialize in particular areas of planning? In, in my career, uh, Mr. Gaddis, I uh, 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 specialized in, it uh, seems to, you know, how careers take you a different path. I seem to specialize in small and medium sized communities across Texas. So um, I hope um, that I'm remembered as a, a planner that assisted many cities, as Marvin Springer did. Uh, in developing plans and providing uh, sound professional planning advice uh, to many communities that could not afford to have a staff planner. Um, and that is one of the things I'm proud of is my legacy. Okay. Any staff members during the Duncan Seco years that stand out in your mind? Uh, at cities or at, oh, at, at, at Duncan? With your firm. Oh, uh, the, uh, uh, the there ha there have been a uh, a, a number of uh, of planners that have uh, continued on. Daniel Harrison, uh, Heather Kinder, Heather Kinder, who is now uh, Heather Sims, uh, and uh, a number of others that were there um, during my tenure to help me build that staff. And uh, I think. Uh, Daniel Harrison is an up-and-coming planner here at Friesen Nichols. Okay. Well, you mentioned Friesen Nichols. At some point in time, Duncan Sethco transitioned. You want to talk about that? Yes. Uh, uh, it began in a bar, uh, as things do. But uh, uh, Alan Greer and I had become had been friends for years and years, and Friesen Nichols was a well-established uh, civil engineering. Uh, environmental science and architecture firm, um, the oldest engineering firm in Texas. Uh, they provided services to many uh, cities and water districts and river authorities throughout Texas, but they had a common uh, uh, objective in that they provided primarily services to public sector clients, which I did. Uh, most of my career I provided services to municipal counties and school districts uh, clients. Well, uh, at that time, uh, Fries and Nichols had always uh, had planners here from time to time, and, and some have come and gone and had distinguished careers on their own, but they really didn't have a group that was urban planning. And so we talked and uh, it looked like the objectives and the cultures were similar, and um, I uh, uh, agreed to a merger with uh, Friesen Nichols and so they purchased the whole company and the whole group and created a group, an urban planning practice group that's still in existence today. Okay. And since you've merged with Friesen Nichols, projects since then that you're particularly proud of? The, uh, uh, we, we have a lot of um, uh, projects that we've worked on um, during that time, but we've created uh, plans for uh, Fredericksburg, uh, Fort Worth, um, a lot of corridor planning uh, jobs. We've uh, 
um, trying to think of some of the ones that uh, that we've uh, worked on uh, Louisville Longview a um, lot of communities are drowned around the Houston area uh, communities in the Corpus area of Portland uh, we just finished work for them so um, a lot of continued small and medium-sized communities um, we have a wonderful group manager now that's uh, also the APA president uh, Wendy Chabay and uh, she is uh, going to continue on the urban planning practice here at Friesen Nichols. Okay. Well, let's go back and tell me how you first got involved with APA or were you involved at all with ESPO or AIP? Uh, no, uh, Marvin Springer was. Marvin uh, worked very hard on starting the short course and was on the initial team among others to develop the short course and uh, Marvin was very, uh, so I knew about it. In fact, I did a lot of the work for him, and so I was involved in that regard. But, uh, but no, I didn't, that was all really uh, in the 70s um, when I was coming up, so I was an entry-level uh, technical plan, uh, technician, not really a certified or a, a registered planner. It was AIP back then. but. Uh, uh, but yes, I uh, was, in, was involved and knew about it, but then um, as I uh, began to um, move and become uh, uh, certified, getting my certified AICP certification, I became involved in APA in the uh, uh, late 70s. Okay. And when did you get involved with uh, the did you get involved as a section officer? Or? Well, y yes, uh, I got involved in the section, but uh, really I had a number of friends, um, Craig Farmer, Frank Turner, uh, yourself, uh, that were involved in APA. And at the time, uh, Frank Turner was president, chapter president, and asked me to take on the uh, then the Educational Foundation. Uh, back then there were two corporations or two entities. There was APA and then there was... Uh, there was the Educational Foundation. The purpose of the Educational Foundation back then was to further the educational activities of the chapter, scholarships and uh, programs, speaking programs at the APA and so on and so forth. Uh, so I, uh, Frank asked me to be the chair of that, so I did. Uh, we, we got that uh, on track. It had uh, been uh, certain level of involvement over the years, uh, some heavy involvement, some light involvement, but we uh, uh, took, a, took that on. Uh, Dick Lilly became the vice chair. Uh, we got a number of great speakers. We had Henry Cisneros. We had uh, John Conley. Uh, John Conley spoke at one of our conferences in the early 90s. In fact, he was, uh, I think that was the last public speaking engagement John Conley uh, did and he passed away five months later after he spoke at the APA conference in Austin. And this was a time when the Education Foundation was responsible for one of the luncheons yes. at the chapter conference. Yes. So um, I also, uh, and then Jeff Table was uh, president in there and he, uh, I won an award as professional development, outstanding professional development officer in the country. And uh, that w uh, Jeff Table nom nominated me for that, and I went up to Washington to receive that. And so uh, I uh, was involved uh, in many other activities, and APA became uh, 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 involved in professional development along the way, it helped rework some of the national testing, uh, set on a number of uh, test committees and uh, during my tenure there until uh, sort of passed the baton or the torch to others. Okay. While you were president of the Education Foundation, do you remember some of the issues or accomplishments? Yes, there was, a, at that time, there was a lot of uh, issues regarding uh, videoing was coming out and uh, we had a lot of video tapes. In fact, uh, Texas A&M sponsored uh, several videos uh, back then which was new and, and innovative uh, and then National didn't always see eye to eye with us on that so we forged those relationships. We also uh, redid the 
guide to Texas communities. It's always been around, but it had been outdated. That was one of the reasons I received the PDO award from the national level, is we redid that completely while I was chair. Um, that format still exists today and has been updated and continues to be updated, but the format that I established is still in effect today. And you mentioned Dick and some others that were on the foundation board at the same time you were. Do you remember any others? Yes, uh, Carol, Carol Barrett, uh, Bill Couch, uh, Karen Walls. Uh, we had a lot of distinguished uh, members of, of, of the chapter uh, sit on, on the Educational Foundation. And so it was an incubation uh, for a lot of uh, different planners around. And I can't remember if you were on it for a while. Was, yeah. And so uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, heritage there and of course now it's been merged in with, with APA overall. So. Okay. I know you have feelings about that. You want to talk about that? Well, uh, I'd always thought the uh, uh, Educational Foundation was a great institution and uh, Dick Lilly took it over after I left and others uh, participated and then uh, you and Carol Barrett and Frank Turner and others came to me and said that you thought that it ought to be uh, merged uh, with the overall chapter. I initially didn't warm up to that idea. I thought it's to be a standalone entity to further the educational, not be so political, but further the educational activities of the chapter and the, and the uh, scholarships and continue with the programs. So, uh, but uh, these friends that proposed this, uh, I trusted and I valued their um, opinions and I acquiesced and then decided it was a good thing and began to help uh, merge that and I think that relationship's been great and it seems to be existing well today. Okay. Have you had any other involvement in the chapter since then? Well, uh, mostly as a sponsorship uh, I, we, uh, my, my uh, involvement now is speaking. I enjoy speaking at the various conferences and supporting APA, both uh, time-wise and financially. Okay. And at some point in time, you were elected to the College of Fellows. Yes, uh, in in around 19 or no, not 19, but uh, 2007 or 8. I can't remember the odd or even year there. Uh, David Hoover nominated me uh, for uh, a fellow, a College of Fellows, and uh, a number of my colleagues, including you, supported me, uh, and I became a member of the College uh, Fellows during that time. Okay. So you talked about uh, some of your mentors. Uh, you talked about Marvin particularly, I guess JT was as well. Any other mentors as you were uh, either from UT Arlington or in your professional career? Or? Well, um, I, I always remember uh, Gene Brooks at UTA. Gene, Gene was uh, a very uh, practical planner that I learned a lot of basic uh, approaches to that still are timeless and exist today. So I've enjoyed uh, that relationship with the University of Texas at Arlington. Um, I uh, was able, like you, uh, to become a distinguished alum uh, about that time, 08 or whenever, about that time. And so, uh, and so I do have an affinity to UTA. Uh, Are you I, still involved with SUPO? Or yes, I sit on the board, uh, the dean's board. Um, uh, SUPA's going through changes now. We're going to have a new dean, and it's merged back with uh, call the School of Architecture, so everything's old and new. So we're having a new dean, and I hope to be able to meet her soon and uh, continue a relationship with her if she would like. So. Got you off track. You were talking about Gene. Any other mentors that you want to cite? Uh, I th I think there's there there's a lot of good um, teachers there that 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 I was able to uh, get guidance from, and uh, of course Ard uh, and Gene were very good at directing me, and so uh, I think those were two at the school. Um, I had a lot of good. Uh, guidance at the city of Plano. Bob Buffington provided a lot of good uh, 
guidance. And after we left, uh, Frank Turner came on at the city of Plano and, and uh, did well under his leadership there as well. But uh, those are some of the uh, folks that have been instrumental in my career. Okay, flip side of that, is there any protégés that uh, you're particularly proud of? People that you have mentored and gone on to do great things? Well, um, I, uh, I also became friends with Craig Farmer. Craig Farmer worked with Friesen Nichols and uh, was a trusted confidant here for a while. And uh, although my uh, tenure uh, with Craig Farmer was brief compared to his career, but uh, for 10 or 15 years we worked together and I like to think that he's doing wonderful uh, now. But uh, uh, Todd Parton is now city manager in Kerrville. And Todd uh, worked for me. Um, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some others that uh, that were uh, that were there. Um, uh, Jennifer Mason is now a planner in Medford, Oregon. She she worked for me for uh, a while. Um, and Daniel Harrison still is here uh, at Friesen Nichols. Uh, Eddie Haas is here at Friesen Nichols, and so I have a lot of um, some of my fingerprints and footprints around. So, actually, I saw him on TV the other day. You doing something in Odessa, or we're doing a, a comprehensive plan for the city of Odessa, and Eddie's the project planner or the project manager. So, um, you have any advice for young planners? Well, uh, there's. Uh, uh, I've always thought that um, that uh, you can outwork half the people. Uh, there's a lot of competition this day in this business, whether you're uh, working for a city or you're working for a consultant. Uh, Lewis McLean always had a good saying about you can outwork half the people. I think hard work uh, overcomes many many things. Uh, another thought is is that uh, that I didn't say, but uh, is that uh, make no small plans. And I've al always thought that uh, one good thing that for cities to do is uh, is uh, is make your plan and work your plan, make it and work it, you know. And so uh, have a plan and then work it and and, and get it done. So uh, those are some of the thoughts that I have that I think are kind of timeless. So. You spent most of your career in the private sector, but you did have a little bit of public sector experience. Do you have any preference of one or the other, or do you have recommendations for people in their careers? Both are exciting. Uh, there, there's exciting careers in municipalities. Uh, consulting work can be very enjoyable. Um, you can. Uh, work on a lot of different projects and in my career I, I think the benefit that being in the consulting practice has been has uh, been that I've gotten to know a lot more people uh, if you work for a city you're sometimes uh, you know you know the people at the city the best and then you go to conferences and meet people but I've had the uh, good fortune of being able to work with a lot of good planners over the years that I became friends with. Uh, and that in the consulting business has allowed me to do that. So I've had a lot of good relationships that I enjoy today, uh, planners that uh, I met while I worked with them in the various jobs, both uh, large and small cities. You've talked a little bit about your comprehensive planning experience, but I also understand that you do a lot of impact fee work. Uh, you want to talk about some of that? Yes. Uh, we actually worked on the first impact fee programs in Texas back in, uh, in, in the late 80s when the law came to uh, be passed by the legislator. We developed the land use assumptions and the impact fees for many cities throughout uh, the, the state. We were one of the first planners and groups that actually developed impact fee programs in the state of Texas. Okay. So I recall you have a daughter, is she still in college? Is she in uh, I have a wonderful daughter, Katie, and she is uh, studying at the University of Texas in the psychology department. Psychology. And she is, at the time of this taping, a junior. Okay. 
Okay. But no interest in her to be a pilot. She uh, has always followed my career with enthusiasm, but she thinks that her calling would be psychology. And in a way, uh, that's what us planners do. Isn't, isn't that true? <laughs> We're kind of psychologists in a way. As I recall, you had some property here in Central Texas. You still have that? Uh, my alter ego is uh, a rancher. Uh, I have property in uh, San Saba County. And uh, one of these years, if uh, I do uh, make it to retirement, and if I'm so fortunate to make it to retirement, is that's where I will retire, on the ranch in San Saba. As I recall, you have a somewhat famous neighbor? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is, a ma is my neighbor. He doesn't bother me much, which is th I'm thankful that I'm, <laughs> I have a lot of solitude out there. And uh, it's just uh, out in the country. Uh, my brother, uh, although he was raised in the same house, he's an urbanist and he likes to live in the city. Uh, I, uh, you, you might mention who your brother is. My brother is uh, a sports writer with the Dallas Morning News and he is the beat writer for the Dallas Mavericks. He's been a sports writer for many years, covered the Houston Rockets uh, when they won their two world championships and the Dallas Mavericks when they won, won their world championship. Eddie Sefko is, um, is his name and uh, he likes being in a city. Uh, somehow I got the genes that like being in the country. So I'm a city boy but love being in the country so I hope to retire there someday. Retirement a couple of times. What are your plans? Um, the uh, Freeze Nichols uh, is uh, an exciting company. They're a Baldridge uh, winner. Uh, they have uh, great leadership here. So I hope to uh, continue my career here and retire at Freeze Nichols. I'll stay as long as uh, they want me and as I can contribute. I'd uh, I'd like to work uh, another five years or so and uh, we are uh, training a lot of great planners to take over the legacy here at uh, Freeze Nichols. I already mentioned Wendy Chabay. She's our chapter president now and I hope she can take the reins here at uh, Freeze Nichols and continue our legacy in planning. Well, we've talked about a lot of material. Is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't touched on? No, uh, but uh, I am grateful for um, all the uh, help I've had over the years. I've had a lot of good friends, including yourself, Dave. A uh, little help along the way from my friends. I've, I've uh, also had uh, the honor working in a great, uh, a lot of great cities, and have a lot of great associations. And uh, I'm hopeful that all my work, uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, I can sleep a little bit better knowing that I made some city somewhere a little better than when I left them, than I first came there and when I left them. So I hope some of the cities are better off from when uh, I came there and uh, making uh, great cities is what we're all about. Well, I don't think you need to hope too much because I'm sure it's true. So I want to thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you, Dave. I've always enjoyed your uh, company, uh, and I hope to spend uh, the future years uh, with you talking about many of the great planning initiatives and topics that we can talk, have to, to deal with. So, and who owes who a beer at this point? I think, uh, I think probably I owe you uh, a beer, but we can uh, keep track of that later. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, Dave. <laughs>